Hello everyone, I welcome you once again to my series of lecture that is Understanding Pharmaceutical Science with Dr. Hari Haran. So, today we are going to discuss about the bacterial transformation. So, I have divided this lecture into four major parts. One, first we understand about bacterial genetics, two, we understand about the process of bacterial transformation and second, how in depth the bacterial transformation occurs in a gram negative cell and fourth one, how the transformation occurs in a gram positive cell. So, first we understand about a bacterial genetics. So, bacterial genetics is nothing but it is a study of genetic information in a bacteria. So, the complete genetic study of a bacteria we call as bacterial genetics and more precisely this is focused on the methods of transfer, how the genetic material is transferred from one bacteria to an another bacteria. So, we get an insight of each of these uh, methods in my future lectures also. So, if you see the different types of genetic transfer in a bacteria, generally the transfer of genetic material occurs in three different types. One is called the bacterial transformation, two is the conjugation and three is the transduction which can be further classified as a generalized and specialized transduction also. So, this lecture is devoted to understanding about the bacterial transformation. So, if you see the bacterial transformation, it is dead back to 1928 that Fred Graeft has found that the DNA can move between the bacteria and the process we can call as a DNA transformation. So, if you see the Frederick Graeft in his experiment, what he has done is that he has put forward the concept called genetic transformation through his experiment. How he has done is, he has taken a two strains of bacteria, one is called the rough strain that means it carries no membrane outside the cell. So, it is rough in nature, so we call it a rough strain and second is the smooth strain which carries a capsule outside its cell wall, so which looks like a smooth in nature, so it is called as a smooth strain. Out of these two strains, rough strains are generally non-virulent in nature, whereas the smooth strain which is relevant in nature and it can cause even death to the animal. So, in his Griffith experiment, if you can see, he has taken four animals, four groups of uh, rats. So, in the first one, he has injected the rough strain which is non-relevant in nature. So, what happened is that the mouse was alive and in the second group, he has injected the smooth strain that is the capsule containing strain. So, which is relevant in nature and it causes death to the mice. And in the third group, he has heat killed this smooth strain. So, once he killed the bacteria, it is no longer can cause the infection. So, what happened is the mice was alive and in the final group what he has done is the two cases in which the heat killed the mice was alive and the rough strain in which the mice also was alive in the results. So, he has mixed both the things and he has injected, but the result what he has expected was that the mouse should be alive because both the things individually if it is administered it was alive. Once it was mixed, what happened is that the mouse was dead. So, the phenomenon because between because of the death of the mice, he has found that the reason the heat killed smooth strain DNA was taken up by the rough strain and it has been converted to a smooth strain. So, thereby it becomes relevant and causes the death of the mice. So, this he has shown with a graphical representation how it has happened. If you see what happened is that a capsule containing smooth strain carries a gene which he encodes the capsule that makes him virulent and once it is heat killed what happened is the bacterial cell wall gets broken out and the DNA also released outside. Once it is mixed with a rough strain what happened is that this rough strain takes up this capsule gene inside and it integrate into its uh, host genome and it is converted to a smooth strain by producing capsule around it. So, this bacterial transformation was the core responsible for the death of the fourth group of mice. So, this was the basic idea of the genetic transfer in happening in a bacteria that is bacterial transformation. So, bacterial transformation is a process 
which uh, uptakes the foreign DNA that is a naked DNA or a fragment of naked DNA which is present in outside the cell inside a medium by a competent cell and later on incorporation of this molecule into the recipient chromosome in a heritable form then only we can consider as a transformation has happened. So, if you see whether it is happening naturally, yes, natural transformation happening between the medium and the bacteria competent cell which is generally random in nature and a part of the genome is get transferred and integrated. So, this can be done by many competent cell especially belongs to the genera like Streptococcus, Neisseria, Helicobacter, Haemophilus influenza, Bacillus subtilis, Pseudomonas. These are ma various genera which can produce a competent cell mostly present in soil and aquatic system, exchange this genetic information in biofilms and other microbial communities also. This can say. So, if you see the process of bio bacterial transformation, so the bacterial transformation process occurs just like that. First, what happens to initiate the process? Yeah, the a bacterial cell, if dies, means a bacterial lysis will occur. So, if a bacterial lies, it's the genetic material along with the cytoplasm is released into the surrounding environment. So, these DNA fragments which are large in size and carry several genes, then this can be taken up by a competent cell. So, the competent cell or the cells which has an ability to take up the DNA, so because it carries a specific proteins called competent factor. So, it takes up the DNA or a part of the DNA molecule, then it integrates inside into the its uh, heritable form into its host DNA. So, if you see the frequency of this successful bacterial transformation can occur in 1 in 1000 of the competent cell. So, what happens until it forms an heritable form then only we consider the bacterial transformation has been occurred successfully. This I have explained with a illustrative diagram. So, the DNA fragments are present in the surrounding of a medium a competent bacterial cell will move and take up the uh, foreign DNA that is a DNA fragment present in the surrounding. So, what happens it take up the DNA fragments and the DNA fragments which is in double standard form generally get inside into a single strand form. Then it aligns itself to the host chromosome then gets integrated. So, if this process occurs perfectly then we call as a successful transformation. If the foreign DNA which has been come inside can be degraded by the host cell by its endonucleus activity then it is removed away then this considered as a unsuccessful transformation. So, if you see the successful bacterial transformation can occur in 1 in 1000 only. So, what was the conditions to achieve this successful transformation is based upon the condition of the competency of the cell. So, the condition of a competent cell to do this successful transformation is that one, the competent cell bacteria should be in certain stages of growth. So, for example, the preferred growth in streptococcus pneumonia is that it should be in exponential phase that is 10 to the power 7 to the 10 to the power 8 cells per ml should be present and moreover it has an ability to synthesize the competence factor which is generally 8 to 10 new proteins associate together to form this uh, transfer mechanism. So, now if you see the mechanism of transformation how it is happening a competent cell binds with a double standard DNA then which is large in size. So, it produces an uh, endonucleus which cuts this uh, fragments and reduces its size to up to 5 to 15 kilo base pair. Then for doing this activity and taking inside the DNA it requires energy which is supplied in the form of ATP or other energy form. Then by an exonucleus activity this double standard one it enters the single strand and gets integrated into the host cell. So, this mechanism I have illustrated in a pictorial diagram. If you see we have a DNA fragment which is carrying a gene called LAC plus. So, the gene will facilitate a bacteria to grow in a lactose medium. 
Now we have a competent bacteria, competent cell which it has a LAC minus gene that means it cannot grow into a lactose medium and how the transformation occurs we can see. So, it carries a receptor, this receptor helps in the transformation process. So, first the DNA fragment which is present outside gets attached with the surface receptors as you can see from the figure. Then the extracellular endonucleus activity, this fragment was reduced to a size which can be taken inside. For example, in generally 5 to 15 globus per it is reduced to taken inside. So, after that what happen is this double stranded DNA gets cutted into a two single strand form. So, one strand is get allowed inside that is it is transported inside the cell. This uptake mechanism will happen. Then this single stranded DNA which is uh, got inside the bacterial cell will align itself with the double stranded host chromosome. So, after this one it will align and it will initiate a homologous recombination and finally it will lead to an heteroduplex formation. Then this heteroduplex will repair this uh, LAC minus gene into a LAC plus gene and finally a successful transformation will occur. Now a LAC minus bacteria will become a LAC plus gene carrying bacteria. So, which once cannot grow in a lactose medium can grow in a lactose medium. So, this is a transformed cell. So, now if we see the DNA uptake of a gram negative bacteria, it carries a protein complex which is um, which can take up this free DNA. So, which is composed of a pilin complex, nucleus proteins which is able to move this DNA inside and gets helps in the integration process. This machinery is quite large and it is little bit complicated in nature, but this can be helps in the uptake of the DNA. So, if you see the schematic diagram of the uptake of the foreign DNA by a Neisseria gonario. So, if you see a gram negative bacteria carries three membranes, one is an outer membrane peptidoglycan and a plasma membrane. Then it carries a pilin complex PLQ and PILE. So, PILQ will present in the outer membrane and the PILE will be associated with the peptidoglycan layer which helps in the movement of the DNA from an outer membrane by pill Q and the pill E moves the DNA into the periplasmic space to the peptidoglycan layer. And the COM E which is associated with this pillin protein helps in the DNA binding which is a DNA binding protein and the nucleus enzyme N which produces an exonucleus activity and breaks this double stranded DNA into two single strand form and helps in the transfer of this single stranded form into the through transmembrane into the cytoplasm by a COM A. So, this is a complex protein that is made up of pilin, pil Q and pil E which helps in the movement from outer membrane and the periplasmic space and peptidoglycan. Then COM A out of this double strand single strand is passed into the cytoplasm this COM E and the nucleus helps in the breakdown of this DNA that is COM E helps in the binding of the protein and puts inside N nucleus will divide the double stranded DNA into a single stranded DNA. This is how the uptake mechanism occurs in a gram negative bacteria. If you see the DNA uptake by a gram positive bacteria, so similar to the Neisseria gonario, the gram positive bacteria for example, Bacillus subtilis also have a similar nature of proteins. So, it carries the pilin complex in the form of COM GC and the DNA binding protein in the form of COM EA, the nucleus N will be present and the channel protein COM EC and COM FA will help in that DNA translocation to the cytoplasm. So, if you see the machinery how we a gram positive bacterium works in uh, uptake of DNA. So, the COM GC the, uh, when compared to gram negative cell wall, the gram positive cell wall has two layer. One is a peptidoglycan layer and a plasma membrane. So, the COM EA and COM EC helps in the binding of the pro DNA. The COM GC helps in the movement of the DNA 
and the nucleus break down of the DNA into a two single stranded form and com FA helps in the translocation of the DNA. So, this is how the bacterial transformation occurs in a gram positive bacteria. So, thank you very much for understanding about the bacterial transformation. So, in my future lectures you can understand about the bacterial conjugation and transduction. Thank you very much.